Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The Dark Island by Robert Barr. A story of espionage in the remote islands of the Outer Hebrides. Lonely and withdrawn, the Outer Hebrides are a long chain of islands, islets and reefs standing like a breakwater off the northwest coast of Britain lying some 50 miles out in the Atlantic and running in an almost unbroken arc for 150 miles. Strangely remote, their population sparse, many of the smaller islands uninhabited. Off the Atlantic coast of the islands, foreign trawlers maintain constant patrol, keeping an eye on the rocket range on South Uist and on other things. It's on one of the smaller, lonelier islands that our story begins as a crofter waits on the shore, watching for the arrival of a naval launch. There's a message from you, Mr. McLeod, to the rocket range. Aye, this morning. A torpedo, you said. Aye. Where is it? On the sand, on the other side of the island. I'm Lieutenant Ritchie. Uh, this is Petty Officer Whitaker. Good morning, Duke. All right. Shall I unship the gear, sir? Yes. A torpedo, then? Well, I said it might be a torpedo. I don't know. It isn't any kind I've seen before. Oh. Um, uh, this is Mr. Nicholson, uh, and Mr. McLeod. Ah, oh. good morning, Mr. McLeod. It is, sir. A fine morning. Well, now, uh, where is this, uh, this torpedo? It's about, uh, a mile, sir, across the island, on the other shore. I'll help Whitaker with the gear, sir. Is that your house, Mr. McLeod? Aye. It would have to be. It's the only one on the island. <laughs> I see. And nicely placed overlooking the bay. Uh, would you like something before we start out? A cup of tea, maybe? Ah, oh, thank you, no, but I, I think we'd better start out. Oh, it's above the tide line now. It won't get up and walk our way. All ready, sir. Mr. McLeod? I'll lead the way. Uh, you said it, uh, it isn't any kind you've seen before. Aye. Tell me, are you uh, familiar with torpedoes, Miss McLeod? Were you uh, in the Navy? r and r I see. You are still on reserve? Aye. What oh, comes in handy? What does? The bit of gas. Oh, yes, of course. And the craft isn't too good. It's poor ground, as mm. you can see. Tell me, when did you find this thing? Uh, early this morning. Did you... Uh... Report it right away? Uh, I wasn't for touching it. I sailed over to the big island and phoned the rocket people from the hotel. But it's safe enough. There's no one around here to tamper with it. Do you live here alone? Aye. Most of the time. There it is. Oh, yeah. Like I said, in the sand. And just above the high water line. Lieutenant? Yes, sir? What do you think? Uh, hmm. I need a closer look, sir. Uh, 
not one of ours, sir. No? Live? I don't know, sir. Might be a practice job. How could you tell? Only by taking it apart, sir. Do you want to take some photographs first? Uh, yes, I think I'd better. I'll get the gear down. Tell me, Mr. McLeod, could it have drifted in, do you think? Uh... No, it didn't drift in. Anything drifting wouldn't have come up on the shore. That came here under power. You think so? I know so. That's why I didn't touch it. We're ready, sir. Do you know, Mr. McLeod thinks it came under its own power. Well, then we'll bank some sand around it and uh, try it. If you'll both keep back a bit, sir. Right. Do you know these islands well, Mr. McLeod? And the tides and the currents. I know where things would drift to. I'm going to rock it a bit, sir. Just keep back. Right. Oh. Uh, lend a hand, Whitaker. Aye, aye, sir. Roll it. <coughs> no. It's all right, sir. The propeller was caught in the sand. It had a few revolutions still to run. That's what I told you. Nothing drifts in here. We'd better make it safe, sir. If you'll come over here, behind the sand dunes... Yes, good. Uh, this should be safe, sir. You can watch from here. And Whitaker will lay a phone line to you, sir, for when we begin to tinker with it. All right. We may have to blow it. I don't think so, Lieutenant. I hope not, sir. They're going to defuse it. Well, if necessary. Since we have to wait, we can get to know each other. My name's Nicholson. You're, uh, McLeod. Ian McLeod. Crofter. Aye. I was in the Merchant Navy for a time. Then the Naval Reserve. Then I came back to the Croft. Why? My father died three years ago. So I came back. <laughs> but you, uh, you say the ground's poor. Tell me, are you married? <laughs> no. <laughs> At last we'd come here to live. <laughs> <laughs> now I see your point. Tell me, have you uh, any idea when this thing came in? Well, it wasn't here yesterday when I came by. It must have come in the night. From its position, it came in on the top of the tide and ran right up in the sand. Mm -hmm. The tide was full at, uh, at two o'clock this morning. Uh, it's foreign, isn't it? Russian. The phone line, sir. Reach is all right. There's plenty of spare. Ah. Would you like to try, sir? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, hello, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Quite clearly, sir. Good. I'm almost ready to start. I've had a look at it. There doesn't seem to be any way of detonating it. Is it a torpedo? Oh, it is, sir. But I think it's something else as well. Are there any identifying marks? No, sir. There's a mark absence of them. What should be the warhead looks rather strange. The motor is still live and ready to run. I'll deal with it first. Let me know when you're ready. I'll give you a buzz, sir. Thanks. Take it, would you, Whitaker? Uh, sir? I was asking if you thought it was foreign. <laughs> Why should we think that? Ah, uh, these trawlers, Russian trawlers, playing about out there. Well, they're fishing, aren't they? Yeah, fishing. And watching the rocket range and other things beside. All that signaling. Out there is the open sea, Mr. McLeod, the Atlantic Ocean. There's nothing between here and America. I know that. Officially, they're fishing. I officially. I know what that means. There were two of them out there last night, signaling to each other or to somebody else, nattering away like a couple of old women. <laughs> and this morning, that thing lands up on the shore. And what do you think they were doing? Trying to sink each other? Or trying to sink your island? It was running fast when it came in here. Lieutenant, sir. Thank you. Yes? I've dealt with the motor, sir. I don't think it'll start up again. I've frozen the warhead just in case... The center casing seems very thin. Oh, uh, Whitaker will take some notes, sir. Yes, go ahead. I'll listen. Mm. Overall length is... Uh, 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 six foot, exactly. Length of what appears to be the warhead, 24 inches. The motor unit is 19 inches. Four fins each... Uh, 
nine inches. A three-blade propeller of uh, phosphor bronze. The circumference is constant from warhead to fins. Thirty-three inches. A center unit seems to be of a light alloy. And thin. Ah, there seems to be a joint. I think I can press it open. <coughs> oh. Starting on the joint now. About one foot from the motor unit. <coughs> it's giving a little. I think it's quite safe. <coughs> I think it's coming. Watch out. What's happened? Lieutenant? What's happening? Uh, it's opened. It isn't a torpedo, sir. I think you'd better come down. Right, we're on our way. Come on, McLeod. Well, Lieutenant, what do you make of it? I think it's a container of some kind, sir. Lens of oil skin. Look at this. A revolver. And this? English money. There's ammunition. It's packed tight with stuff. Mm. This feels like binoculars. A camera. Another packet of money. Swedish money. Will we examine the rest, sir? Uh, no. No, wrap it all up again. Put it back and close the thing. We'll bring the boat round here. Oh, you won't get the boat round here. Not at this state of the tide. You'll be quicker taking it back across the island. How heavy is it? Oh, we can manage it, sir. Uh -huh. Well, no one will see you carrying it. You can take it back to my house. Right. Whitaker, lend me a hand. Aye, aye, sir. Together, sir. <coughs> ah. Ah. Ready, sir. I'll lead the way. Here we are. Do you want to bring it in? No. Uh, take it out of the boat, Lieutenant, carefully, and let me know when you're ready. Yes, sir. All right, Whitaker? Just about, sir. You'll come in while you're waiting. Oh, thank you. So, this is where you live. Aye. Oh, it's comfortable enough. Uh, you can keep an eye on your boat from the window. Oh, yes, I can. Thanks. So, there was money in it? Yes, there was money in it. <laughs> you better not let that get around. <laughs> Uh, Mr. McLeod? Aye? You're still on the Naval Reserve, aren't you? Yes. Then uh, you know about the Official Secrets Act and what it means. I think I'm a way ahead of you. Will you have something? Some tea, maybe, or, uh, or some of this? Ah, yes, thank you. You still say it wasn't from one of the trawlers? Well, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as you're concerned, Mr. McLeod, it never came here at all. And if anyone should come looking for it, you just let them look and report it to me. At the rocketry? Yes. You take water with it? Oh, just just a little, thank you. Well, you've, uh, you've a fine collection of books. Now, most of them were my father's. Uh -huh. And this? Hmm? No, 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 the fowling piece is mine. Do you use it often? Oh, in season. You know, if I were you, I'd carry it around with you. I think you may have some visitors to your island. Looking for something? Yes, or asking. Your drink, Mr. Nicholson. Your health. Yes, sir. Ready, sir. Right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. McLeod. I uh, may come back and see you again. You'll be more than welcome. If I'm not here, you may find me over at the Wee Hotel. Right. You'll be going back to the rocket range now. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that's what we've found, Major Williams. Hmm. It's quite a little do-it-yourself kit, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Camera, binoculars, two revolvers, ammunition, British money, Swedish money, cassettes of film, bottle of liquid, I've no idea what that is, a passport. A passport, eh? Yes. Not much help there, I'm afraid. It's a Finnish passport stamped for entry into Sweden, but otherwise it's blank. No name, no photograph. Yeah. And um, a piece of music. Tell me, do you read music, Major? <laughs> afraid not. 
You're called to London, sir, to the brigadier. I'll put it through, Sergeant. Uh, on the scrambler. Sure. Well, I used to be able to read the stuff. Let's see. Good, am I? Frankly, no. Someone must know what it's all about. I wonder if they've started looking for it. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Brigadier on the line, sir. Ah. Uh, Williams here, sir. Uh, about the message I sent. I've read your message, Williams. Quite a find. We're very interested. Is Nicholson with you? Yes, sir. Then I want you to bring the lot to London. Bring it, sir. That's what I said. Bring it. Nicholson can stay and continue inquiries. I want you here to answer questions. I'll expect you today. Yes, sir. Oh, he doesn't waste time. Uh, Sergeant. Sir? Book me a flight from Bembecula today through to London. Have all this stuff created. Yes, uh, uh, no, no, wait a moment. Um, have the motor unit disconnected and it should all fit into a trunk. Personal baggage. Yeah, you, you'll book it as personal baggage and I'll travel with it. Very good, sir. Was London expecting something like this? Yes, I, I think so. Hmm. I think I've got this now. It goes like this. sent for me, sir? Ah, there you are, Grant. I want you to meet Major Williams, just down from the rocket range. Captain Grant, my personal aide. Uh, evening, Captain Grant. Brigadier's just been telling me about you. Good evening, sir. Grant, is the report ready yet? Uh, yes, indeed, sir. I'll get it. And how do you like being back in London, Williams? I'm not quite sure, sir. Something's so noisy down here. <laughs> Does that mean you like the islands? Oh, no, sir. No. It's like being on the edge of the world. I'm very lonely. Ours is a lonely kind of job, wherever you are. Yes, sir. Tell me about this little island. Can you show it me on the map? Uh, yes, sir. It's only a tiny thing called Crayon. Here's our island, this large one, sir. I see. And here's the rocket range down the south, you see. Now, um, about 20 miles north of the range and a mile offshore, more or less opposite the hotel. Ah, oh, here it is, sir. Crayon. Yes, there's only the one croft on it, owned by this man, McLeod. I see. By the way, don't concern yourself about the rocket range. This thing is quite different. Yes, sir. Apart from McLeod, how much do you think people up there know about this? Apart from McLeod, I shouldn't think anything. Tell me about the people in the area. Oh, very few, sir. A few islanders and some visitors for the salmon and trout fishing who stay at the hotel. Regulars, mostly. When they come for the fishing, how long do they stay? Difficult to say, sir. Some stay two weeks, uh, a month, or some stay for the season. They come and go? Yes, sir. And never more than about half a dozen at a time. Know any of them? Not really, sir. Been too busy with security at the rocket site. Hmm. I want you to look at some photographs. Do you recognize any of these people as having been on the island? No. 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 No, no I'm afraid not, sir. I have the report, sir. Ah. They've made quite a good job of it. Right, let's hear it. Well, first, the contents of the container, sir. Binoculars, high-power night glasses, magnification 15 by 20, country of origin, eastern Germany. Camera and uh, two cassettes of film, country of origin, eastern Germany. Use microphotography. Bottle of clear liquid. It has been analysed. Use microphotography. Three valves, transmitter type. Two Colt 45 revolvers, country of origin, United States, use offensive purposes. 
Two hundred rounds of ammunition for use with revolvers. One Finnish passport, stamped for entry into Sweden. Valid until next month, and awaiting photograph and description of traveller. Valid only until next month? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. Shall I go on, sir? Yes. Uh, Three hundred pounds in Swedish currency. Genuine used notes, use in connection with illegal entry into Sweden. Seven hundred and fifty pounds in Bank of England one pound notes. Genuine used numbers not in serial order. Use possibly for financing some project. I've no doubt. Some projects that may require financing in this country and may require offensive weapons and connected with someone who expects to be away from here and into Sweden within the month. There's more to come, sir. Uh, just a minute, Grant. What do you make of it, Williams? Oh, has it to do with the island, sir? Uh, yes, insofar as the container was being delivered to someone there. But I think the implications must be wider, don't you? By the way, what do you know about this man, McLeod? Well, it was he who told us. But we are having him better. Yes. Go on, Grant. Well, you remember Nicholson said the torpedo motor still had some distance to run when it fetched off on the beach. The boffins have done a good job on the motor unit. And they've found what they think is a slight error in the setting of the gyroscope. Now, it's not much, but if you'll look at the map they've drawn, sir. Yes. The torpedo, the container, fetched up on uh, this island. Mm. Is that correct, Major Williams? Uh, yes, uh, Crayon. Well, the boffins say if it was fired at full tide, allowing for the currents in that area, this would be its track, this line here, sir. Yes. Which suggests it was fired from this position at sea. Now, sir... They further suggest that if there had been no error in the gyroscope setting, if it had been true, there would have been a slight divergence, and it would have followed this track in the direction of this other small island. Uh, can you... Uh, can you read its name? Well, it looks like De Rocha. Uh, it's Gallic, sir. Dolka. It means the Dark Island. The Dark Island? Yes. It's rather an eerie place. No one lives there. Then it's a very likely theory, isn't it? The container was intended for an island where no one lives to be collected by someone. I think it's just a bit of luck. You will tell Nicholson that we don't think this is the first container to be delivered in this area. It's just the first we've found. Yes, sir. You will impress that on him. Someone is looking for it. Rather anxiously, I hope. You will tell Nicholson that we must know who is looking for it. And that is now his principal job. Uh, what about the piece of music, sir? That's probably just a password. Tell Nicholson that he must watch that island. you said, Mr. Nicholson. Yes, and I wanted to get me there unseen. Oh, from this side, we shouldn't be seen too easily. But if anyone's there, we've not much hope of getting in without being aired, at least. Well, we'll just have to take that chance. If we are seen, you'll just say that you're showing me around. The map shows a long beach on the Atlantic side. Yes, Trial. I beg your pardon? It means the white shore. Oh, I see. That's what it's called. Do you know anyone who visits the island? Oh, sometimes Alec Thompson brings a visitor over, but that's very rare. Alec Thompson? Aye, he works for one of the fishing syndicates. Takes visitors up over. Um, Mr. Nickerson. Yeah? I was wondering... Look, if we're going to work together, and I rather think we are, isn't it time we drop the mister? I mean, apart from anything else, it might be less noticed among your friends if you called me Jim. Aye, it would. And uh, if I call you Ian. Ah. Oh, we might have a bit of luck and get in unnoticed. We can beach her here. Good. We'll pull her up. Right. Ah, uh, uh, she'll be all right here. I'll take you an easy way to the other shore.
You can look down on it from here. There it is. The white shore. All three miles of it and not a soul on it. It's quite a picture. No, and a calm day it is, but not always. You think that thing was meant to come ashore there? Well, I think it's a... I think there is somebody down there. Hmm? At the far end. I know. Binoculars, please. Thanks. Yes, there is. It's a girl. Hmm? Here, have a look. Hmm. Do you know her? I'm not sure. Just a moment till she turns. Ah, she is looking for something. Do you know her? Oh, I. Ah, she's the pretty one. She came recently, living with her uncle at the hotel. It's Miss Summers. Let me have them in. Right. Yes. She's searching, all right. She looks worried. Right. This is where we go down. I'll offer to help. No. You ready? Yes. You will stay where you are. Both of you. Do you know who he is, Ian? Aye. It's Alec Thompson. I see him. And here comes that colonel. What in damnation are they doing here? Visiting. Do you always shoot at visitors? What happened, Thompson? It uh, was a mistake, colonel. I uh, saw something move in the heather. I thought it might be a rabbit. Oh, there will be no shooting. No, colonel. Well, that's a relief. Can we uh, get up now? Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. If there'd been an accident, sir, it would have been your own fault. No visitors are allowed in this island. Well, at least you might have the grace to apologize for the shooting. All right. If that's what you want, Mr... Uh... Nicholson. And this is... Uh, I in... know, Mr. McLeod. Oh, where is your boat? On the other side. I'd be obliged if you'd return to it. In future, you will ask permission to come here. Oh, I saw your niece down on the beach. I think she was looking for something. I was just going down to help her. Thompson, take them to their boat and see them off. Yes, Colonel. Come on. Uh, Thompson. Yes, Colonel. Unload that gun. Yes, Colonel. Uh, come on. Thompson, unload that gun. In my own time. Where's your boat? Down in the cove. I'm surprised at you coming here, Ian. I was showing my friend the islands. So no harm in it. You were very quick with that gun, Alec. Oh, a mistake. Just a mistake. They happen. Hello there. Oh, good morning. Oh, what happened up there? I heard a shot. Mr. Thompson mistook me for a rabbit. Oh. Are you all right? <laughs> Fortunately, it's a very poor shot. We are now being marched to our boat. Alec. Your uncle's orders, miss. Uh, I'm sorry about this. My name is Nicholson. Jim Nicholson. Oh, Mary Summers. How do you do? Alec, you lead the way. Yes, miss. Uh, come on, Ian. Don't waste time, miss. He wants them off. Oh, don't pay any attention to him. I'll stick with you. I saw you down on the beach. I was on my way to help you. That was kind of you. Tell me, uh, what were you looking for? My dog. Oh, I see. <laughs> he ran off among the dunes. <laughs> Alec! Alec, keep a lookout for Scamp, will you? And don't go firing that gun at him. No, miss. Was my uncle rude to you? Well, he, he was rather sharp, yes. He likes being alone. Do you live here? <laughs> no one lives here. We're over at the hotel on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. We live in London in the winter and come here for the summer. My uncle likes it. Do you? I think it's boring. Are you staying long? Uh, yes. Well, then you must have dinner with us at the hotel. Oh, thank you. Get to know Uncle. He's really rather a sweetie. Well, he sounded full of fire and brimstone. Uh, tell me, uh, do you know why? He just doesn't like visitors on his island. Oh. Tell me, is there anything else you want to know? I, uh, think I'm saying you're welcome. Still, we're almost there.
Now you take him out of here. Aye. Goodbye, Mr. Nicholson. Bye, Miss Alice. Oh, I may see you at the hotel tonight. So you may. Oh, that was Alec Thompson. Aye. They were looking for something. Yes, they were. But they won't find it. No. Well, I've got a date with the lovely Miss Summers. So I expect I'll be seeing you later tonight. Where do we go now? To the rocket range. i better make a report. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, sir. I didn't know you were back. I flew in half an hour ago. Oh. This is Captain Grant, the Brigadier's PA. Jim Nicholson. Hello there, Nicholson. Hello. He's come up from London to look around and make a personal report. Have you been to the island yet? Well, I've been to it. I've been shot at and thrown off it. Shot at, eh? Well, in a kind of way, yes. You've come just in time for some fun, Grant. Yeah, so it seems. Hmm. Well, uh, I was explaining to Grant about these foreign trawlers... Now, we, we have fairly full reports on their movements, but they operate over a very wide area. All around here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they come in shore from time to time. Light signals have been seen to seaward. But they aren't at regular intervals. Well, not regular by any measurement we know of, but it seems to be always for three successive nights, except on this last occasion, when we picked up signals on only two nights. Yes. If we're right, it would seem to take three nights to complete an operation. One night signaling to arrange it, next night to deliver, third night to get the okay and sail away. On this last one, there'd be no okay, because we found the container. They're spy ships. No. The brigadier thinks they're working with a spy ship. Oh. He thinks there's a reception group operating on the islands. He thinks so, sir. If you come over to the large-scale chart, I'll show you what happened this morning. This is the island, mm -hmm. Doraka. And this is the this is the cove where our boat was moored, and this is the beach. And we crossed by this route. Mm -hmm. There's an old house here. Hasn't been lived in for years. It's in a pretty poor state. Where did you meet with the trouble? Um, just here, mm -hmm. looking down on the beach. This is the beach where the container should have landed. Yeah. It's a much better beach, about three miles long. There was a girl searching it, and there was a man protecting her. As soon as I spotted her... He spotted me and took a pot shot. And then this colonel appeared. Angry as hell, he was. Oh, you let them scare you off. Well, if they were looking for the container, they wouldn't find it. I stayed long enough to see what I wanted to see. This colonel? British? Oh, yes, quite definitely. The Colonel Jemison. Well, I don't know what regiment, but it shouldn't be too difficult to trace him. Late 50s, early 60s. Retired. And the man who shot at you? Alec Thompson. McLeod says he's an ex-trawlerman, and he's been in the Russian Navy. Swanson, he's the chap who runs one of the fishing syndicates, brought him here as a general handyman to take syndicate members fishing, you know, take them to the islands. An ex-trawlerman, eh? And these foreign spy boats are trawlers? Yeah. The girl? Says she's the colonel's niece. About 23 or 24. Mary Summers. I think she's a Londoner. Uh, know anything else about her? Not yet. Oh, with this last container, there can be no OK. So they'll be back again. It's going to cause them a lot of trouble. Does this thing lead to London, Grant? Well, if you consider what it contained, British money, Swedish money, revolvers and ammunition, spares for a transmitter, materials for microphotography, a blank passport, it leads somewhere. To London? The Brigadier thinks that part of it is London-based. But he wants the origins traced here. What else does he think? He doesn't tell me. He just sits in London and calls the tune. Mm. Have, uh, have you seen these photographs? Can you recognize anyone? They're street snaps. People walking past. That's right. Street snaps. Well, who am I supposed to recognize? Well, you just look at them. See uh -huh. if uh, any of their faces are familiar. Well, uh, this one was taken in Whitehall, wasn't it? Mm. Yes, that's right. 
Ah, this man at the back, always behind a woman. He looks a bit like Swanson. The man who runs the fishing syndicate. Yes, that's right. He owns rights in some of the locks and brings people up from the south for a fishing holiday. And brought Alec Thompson here. That's him. Well, you couldn't tell from this. There's only half a face behind a woman. It's a lousy photograph. Yeah, well, street snaps usually are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, you'll see him tonight. I'm going to the hotel for a drink. I'll take you. What story have you given them? That I'm a visitor. Just looking around. We'd like you to be a visitor too, Grant. You should book in at the hotel. All right, sir. I'll take you there tonight. I'll take the boat round as soon as it gets dark. How far is it? No, not so far. In fact, it's in that direction. But uh, we have to swing around this way. Why? Scaries. Little islands. All sorts of hazards. If it was daylight, you'd see them. This is the safe route. Is it always so dark at night? It's always as black as your hat. How do you find your way around? <laughs> First lesson in local navigation. Yeah. As you come into the sound, you pick up the light of the McNeil craft. That was the light on the left back there. Oh, yes. You pass that on the port side and give it about, oh, ten minutes until you pick up the light of the McDonald craft. <laughs> and now you know that is on the headland, and you swing west to pass it. That's it, straight ahead. The light of the kitchen window. Yes, well, supposing they weren't at home. Well, <laughs> that'll be too bad. With it. Straight ahead is America and these trawlers. <laughs> You must teach me the local rules. Oh, Daisy, yes. How long are you here? Hmm? Well, in this godforsaken place, any time is too long. You, uh, came up to look at me. Well, if you want a straight answer, yes. Uh-huh. Do you mind telling me why? Well, since we're equal rank, I'll tell you. The fact is that the major doesn't seem too bright. You mean for this job? Yes. And me? I think the brigadier will be satisfied. Oh, well, that's good to hear. (laughs) What's he like? The brig? Yeah. Oh, he's all right. He knows what it's all about. Well, then why doesn't he tell us? Well, because he has the big picture. Oh. In intelligence, you don't tell the underlings. (laughs) We are here to observe and report. Now... Tell me more about your local aids to navigation. <laughs> well, we've uh, passed the kindly light of the McDonald's. Who happened to be at home? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we now swing northwest and keep going until we sight the lights of the hotel. I can see them now. Where? Out there. No, 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 no. No, the hotel's up that way. There was a light out there. Hold the tiller. What are you doing? We stay here and watch. There is a light. It's due west. It's one of those damn trawlers. She's signaling. How far is she? About three miles, maybe four. Signaling in groups of four. Have you got a pencil? I'll write them down. Mm -hmm. Four whites, two reds. Mm -hmm. White, a red. Mm -hmm. Here it comes again. Four reds. Where are we? Look, can we get a fix on her? I know where she is. But there's a chart under that cushion. Now, look. We're here. Mm. Take this compass and get a fix. Uh, Hold it. Someone's replying. Where? To the south. Now, that's the fix we want. Can you get it? Yes. Ah. The reply is in groups of four. I've got the bearing. Are you sure you know where we are? Yes, to a pinpoint. Well, that's it. Oh, well. Short and sweet. What do we do now? If somebody's out on the island signaling, we get to the hotel and see who's missing. How far? Well, almost there. Drive like that in the dark? Not always, no. 
The hotel is just round that headland. What headland? Well, you see it from the road. Look, you go first and book in. We'll meet in the bar as strangers and work it out from there. As strangers? Will that work? Oh, yes, yes. They're very friendly. Book in and the manager will introduce you to someone in the bar. You go on. I'll put the boat up. Okay, well, see you later. Good evening, sir. I'm the manager, Macaulay. I was wondering if you had a room for tonight. Are you one of Mr. Swanson's syndicate, sir? Uh, no, no, I'm just on holiday. Uh, my name is Grant. For the fishing, sir? No, no, just for a holiday. Aye. Well, you might be in luck, sir. If you'll uh, just wait here, sir. Good evening, Mr. Nicholson. Good evening, Mr. McCauley. Has uh, Ian McLeod come in yet? Aye, he's in the bar. Oh, good. I'll just pop through. Ah, there you are, Ian. Oh, uh, um, Alec Thompson has been asking about you. He's coming over now. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Nicholson. Good evening. I'd like to buy you a drink for what happened this morning. Uh, it was an accident, wasn't it? <laughs> not in the way you think. Oh, I, I'm not as bad a shot as that, am I, Ian? No, he could hit a rabbit at 40 yards. <laughs> With a bullet. <laughs> Break between the eyes. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, will you have a drink with me? I'd be honoured. Ian, I'll have, uh, have a mort. Uh-huh. Uh, where's Macaulay? Oh, he's uh, tending to a visitor. He won't be long. We have a room, Mr. Grant. There was a booking for it tonight. Hasn't arrived. You're not with Mr. Swanson. Uh, no, no. Seems no point in it lying empty at this time of night. Uh, here it is. Uh, Dr. Lawrence from London. You wouldn't know him, sir? No. You're from London? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, if you need a room... Uh, how long will you be staying, sir? For as long as you can take me. Uh, that's fair. Just you sign here, sir. Room number six. Will you be going straight to your room, sir? Oh, I'd like a drink first. I'll take you to the bar and introduce you. You'll find them a nice lot of people, but uh, it's all talk about fishing. <laughs> Come on, Mac. We're waiting. All right, Alec. What is it? Uh, what is it, Mr. Nicholson? Oh, scotch, please. Three scotch. And uh, one for the colonel and one for Mr. Swanson. That's five. I'm <laughs> making apologies all round tonight. It was costly, Mr. Swanson. <laughs> it was. Uh, may I introduce a visitor, gentlemen? Just arrived. Mr. Grant from London. This is Mr. McLeod. How do you know? Mr. Do. Nicholson. Ah, Mr. Do Thompson. Mr. Grant. Oh. Thompson. Now you'll have someone to talk to, Mr. Grant. Oh, thank you. Uh, add one for Mr. Grant. Oh, that's very kind of you. Not at all, not at all. I'll, uh, I'll just take these over to the Colonel and Mr. Swanson. Uh, help yourselves. You too, Mr. Grant. I'll be back. Oh, it wasn't as difficult as you thought, was it, Grant? No. <laughs> so, you are Ian McLeod? Uh, yes, yes. We know each other already, and but we've arranged to be introduced. <laughs> I gathered that. You've met Alec Thompson, and the two he's gone over to are the Colonel and Swanson. Of the fishing syndicate? Aye. Right. Anyone missing? So far as I can see, only the girl. There was some signaling tonight, Ian. Where? Well, I'll show it to you on the chart later. Hello. The colonel seems to be having a go at Thompson. Huh. Alec won't take kindly to that. Maybe so, but he's taking it now. Ah, but uh, he's coming back. Sorry about that. Uh, will you be here for a while, Mr. Nicholson? Yes, I think so. I've got to go out. Uh, something I left unfinished, but uh, I'd like to see you when I get back. All right. You'll wait? Yes. I'll keep your drink for you, Alec. <laughs> All right. Thanks. You two stay here and have a chat. I want to see who he's meeting. I won't be long. Hey, your hair, Mr. Grant. Mm, no. So, you're... You're a friend of Mr. Nicholson's. Uh, we were introduced here tonight. But you're interested in what happened this morning. And in what you found yesterday. If you're a friend, you should go after him. Stick. Close to him. 
Wait for us here. Oh, there you are, Mr. Grant. You'll want to see your room now. Uh, not yet, Miss McCauley. I, I thought I'd have a breath of air first. Aye. It's a fine night. Where are you? Here. Yeah. He's as black as he had. Like I said, it always is. But you'll get used to it. Can you see the edge of the shed over there? No. No, you will in a minute. Can you see the car parked down by the shore? Mm -hmm. The side lights are off. Oh, yes, yes, I see it. It pulled up just as I got out. Switched off its lights. Someone is watching or having a talk. Oh, God, it's chilly out here. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Thompson? Ah, uh, not a sign. There you are, Miss Summers. Your uncle was asking for you. Will I tell him you're here? Is he in the bar? Aye. Oh, no, please don't trouble. Oh, good evening, Mr. Nicholson. Hello, I've been looking for you. Have you uh, been out walking? No, no, I was out visiting a friend. Katie Kennedy, the school teacher. Oh, yeah. you know her? No, I, um, no, I don't. I thought you'd been walking. Your shoes are wet. Oh, I came back by the shore. Oh, I it see. was a mistake. It was wetter than I thought. Uh, you're back. Uh, yes, Uncle. Good evening, sir. Oh, it's Nicholson, isn't it? Yes. I understand my niece has made amends for my rudeness and that you'll have dinner with us sometime. Oh, thank you very much. Now, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Well, Mary, I was uh, just on my way to the bar. Will you join me? No, thank you. But don't let me stop you. I'm coming, Uncle. Still here, Ian? Huh? Oh, hi. Oh, did you see Alec Thompson? No. The Colonel has just had a row with Mr. Swanson and stormed out. I saw him in the lobby. More important, Ian, the girl has been out on the shore tonight and came back with something urgent to tell the Colonel. You said Alec Thompson was a trollerman. Aye, and I think he wants to tell you something. Oh? Listen, we saw signals from one of the foreign trawlers tonight, and a reply from one of the islands. You know the islands. I need your help. I'll be more than pleased. I got a fix and marked it on a chart. It's down in the boat. If you'll wait, I'll get it. fix the island they're using. Come on. Here we are. Where did you put the chart? Well, I 
found it under the cushion. Mm. I'll hold it steady. If you'll get in. Hold and... What? It's our Pauline. It was up in the bow. Yeah. It's been moved. There's... There's something under it. I'll see what it is. It's... It's a man. He's dead. Who is this? Alec Thompson. He's been killed and put in your boat. Someone's coming. Chasing after him. What a good start, Miss. Mm. What do we do about Thompson? I'm going to take him back to the rocket range. Let the Major decide what to do. You'd better go back to the hotel and tell Ian McLeod I'll see him in the morning. Right. Oh, and Grant. Yes? Check on Swanson's movements. Morning, sir. Have you seen the Major? Oh, yes, I have, Sergeant. Mr. McLeod is waiting for you, sir. Oh, show him in, would you? And, uh, Sergeant, let me have the large-scale map. Yes, sir. Uh, would you go in, Mr. McLeod? Come in, Ian. Oh, leave the door a moment, would you? Well, uh, how did the Major take it? About Thompson? Well, he's worried about having a corpse on his hands. But that's his problem. Our problem is the signal post. The, uh, chart, sir. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now, Ian... You know the islands well. Aye, well enough. So, uh, you can help me with this. Grant and I were about here when we saw the light signals out at sea. A trawler? I should think it was a trawler. About five miles off and signaling in groups of four. Aye, I've seen them at it once or twice. When? Oh, some months ago. On nights when the tide is full. It was full last night? Yes. Did you uh, ever see a reply from the shore? No. Hmm, well, we did. And we took a bearing on it. South, south, west of us. Two, three, one. Will you mark it, Ian? Yeah. How far from you was this signaling? On the land? Well, it was quite dark. Maybe about three miles. Is it anywhere near your island? No. Nor near the dark island. Mm. South of it. The only land on that bearing is Cantrai. Can what? Cantrai. It's the name of a beach. Mm -hmm. Here, this, uh, this long one here. <laughs> yeah. You seem to go in for long, empty, deserted beaches up here. <laughs> what kind of signal was it? From the shore, huh? a very strong beam. They must have used a powerful signal lamp. You couldn't get a big signal lamp and the power down to that shore and back. Oh. Not at night. Then we, uh, we better go and take a look. Captain Grant has arrived, sir. Ah. Morning, Nicholson. Uh, morning, Mr. McLeod. Morning. Worked it all out between you? Not yet, no. Was Swanson at the hotel when you got back? Yes, he was just going up to bed. Huh? The colonel was in, so was the girl. I had a walk with your girlfriend after breakfast. Very pretty, very charming. Yes. What have you done with the unfortunate Thompson? The major's dealing. It's a security matter now. His clothing's been examined. Lots of sand and fine gravel. It seems he was killed somewhere else and carried to my boat. A present for you. <laughs> yeah. From someone who knows who you are. Or thinks he knows who I am. Ah. The colonel was in a right old flap at breakfast, popping in and out, looking everywhere for Thompson. Said he was booked to take him to his island this morning. Was it genuine or was he putting on a show? Oh, I think it was genuine. He was bucolic, about to burst a blood vessel. They were both very anxious to get to the island early. To continue the search? I think so. Did Swanson seem to know about Thompson? I didn't see him. He was up early and away. Was he? Can't the girl handle the motorboat? Well, she says she can't. 
Then why didn't you play the gentleman and offer to take the colonel and the girl to the island? What, to be shot at? Not likely. I'll leave that part of the operation to you. Uh, thanks very much. Meantime, we're left with this wretched bearing. The reply to the trawler last night was from this shore. Ian was just telling me about it. Aye, I was saying it's a wild shore. The whole stretch of it. It's dangerous to get at or get away from. No one in their senses would go there at night. Not on choice. Why not? Well, there are only certain sets of the tide when you can get onto that part of the coast at all. Darkness would make it more dangerous. Then if it's not from choice, it must be from necessity. Is uh, this the position you think the trawler was in last night? Yeah. That's the spot the boffins worked out when the trawler was firing that torpedo container. Ah. To hold a precise position in the darkness and against these tides, she'd need two signal points ashore to take bearing from, right? Yes. So this beach must be one of them from necessity. What necessity would that be, Mr. Grant? Uh, the necessity of delivering these things to the Colonel's Island. Daraka. And that means the Dark Island, you say? Aye. Then we'd better shed a bit of light on it, hadn't we? Before we go there again, Grant, I think I'd better search for the signal post on, um... Uh, what do you call it, Ian? Can try. Can try. You'll never get there by yourself. I'd better take you. All right. We'll go now. You can't. You'll have to wait. Why do you say that, Mr. McLeod? Uh, the way the tide is today. All this area here, it, it looks like sand on your chart. It's quicksand. You'd go into it right up to your ears. It isn't firm until the tide is almost out. And if you're going there to search for something, you may have to stay on the shore till the morning. Right. So, uh, what time do we go? I'll pick you up here at three o'clock. That'll be splendid. Bye, Mr. Grant. Mm. Oh, goodbye. Oh, thank you, Ian. Nah. Goodbye. You may have to stay there until morning. Well, it's what I plan to do anyway. They were searching for the container yesterday. They didn't find it, so they had to signal last night. They'll be searching again today, so I want to be out there too, watching for them. Mm. Well, I'd better make a report to the brigadier. Oh, I'll get the sergeant to... No, I booked it when I came in. Oh, so please, please Look... If you might be staying out there until morning, I've uh, brought up three little gadgets for keeping in touch. Oh. One for the Major, one for you, one for me. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's a neat little thing. What is it? What is it? Hmm. It's a radio. All three on the same wavelength. To talk, you flick this. Oh. Look, there were transmitter parts in that container. The trawlers will be keeping a listening watch. All taken care of. There's a built-in scrambler. You oh. just talk in the clear. Now, for this operation, the call sign will be Starfish. Mm -hmm. The Major will be Starfish 1, and you'll be Starfish 2. Starfish 2. I'll be Starfish 3. Right. Your call to London, sir. The Brigadier's on the line. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Morning, sir. Grant speaking. Morning, Grant. Have you settled in? Yes, sir. And things have started to happen. Oh? One of the syndicate men was killed last night. The one who shot at Nicholson. Alec Thompson. What? Thompson? Yes, sir. Major Williams is dealing with it at this end. Thompson was an ex-trawlerman. He'd been in the Merchant Navy. I'd like a check made on him. And also on a man named Swanson, who runs a fishing syndicate and brings visitors up here. Eric Swanson. He's uh, foreign-looking. I imagine the Eric might have been spelt with a K. Eric Swanson. Yes, sir. And would you also check on a man from London named Lawrence? Uh, Dr. Lawrence. He was booked into the hotel by Swanson, but he hasn't arrived yet. I got his room. Dr. Lawrence. Christian name? I don't know, sir. And I'd also like a check on a girl named Mary Summers. Mm -hmm. She's from London. Aged about 24. Says she's Colonel Jameson's niece. I'll have them all checked. Uh, Grant, now that you've met this Jim Nicholson, what do you think? Oh, first class, sir. I think you'd approve. He's uh, going out today to check on one of the signal posts with the man McLeod. Then see, he's properly protected. Uh, yes, sir. Have you anything on Colonel Jameson yet? Uh, not yet. George Hammond's running the check. I'll send for him. If there is anything on Jameson, I'll phone you back. Goodbye, Grant. Bye, sir. Well, what's the news? Huh? Oh, the Brigadier's sending for Hammond. Hammond? Yeah, George Hammond. Who's he? Hmm? 
Oh, oh, he's the brain who does all the checking in the department. That and a few intelligence appreciations. And what will his appreciation be on Colonel Jameson? You will know in good time. Now, let's have another look at this chart. Morning, Brigadier. Oh, come in, Hammond. The file on Colonel James. Ah, oh, thanks. Well, what do you make of it? Very much what we thought, sir. Bowler had it six years ago. Mm -hmm. A bit of a duffer. A bit of a temper. A bit bullshit. Is he now? Opinionated, sir. And irritable. Uh, but uh, not an unusual army record at that rank. No. Hmm. It doesn't account for him being out there on an island, an island of his own, moreover. Perhaps this does. Oh? A little book on birds. Birds? Good Lord. He published it privately a year after he was bowler hatted. It suggests he's a bit of an expert. It's his hobby. Hmm. It could be a hobby, or it could be a cover. He could practice this hobby anywhere. It still doesn't explain the island. It's strange what colonels get up to, especially the old ones. Uh, do you want me to go up there? No, I want you here for some further checking. A girl named Mary Summers, who says she's the colonel's niece. Miss Summers. A man named Eric Swanson, who takes visitors Swanson. up there and is friendly with the colonel. A Dr. Lawrence, no Christian name, who may be on his way to the islands. Uh, and this man, Alec Thompson, employed by Swanson... And murdered last night. You think it's a reception group? Just check on them, George. Uh, of course, sir. Will Grant be able to cope? Ah, he's settling in. And Nicholson's going to search for a signal post today. I'd like those reports as soon as possible, Hammond. Does this gale never stop blowing? Oh, there's always a bit of a breeze up here. Breeze? Ah, you get used to it. We'll strike a wee road in a minute and there'll be a bit of shelter and we can have a rest. But we, we'll have to keep going. Oh, what a slave driver you are. Now, ah, here's the road now. Be a bit easier. Hmm. And there's an old car. I here it is. You can get in out of the wind for a minute. Right. Well, oh, that's better. Oh, now, how much further is this, uh, this sinister beach of yours? Can try. Yeah. About another hour. And it gets rougher all the way. Are you sure you want to stay there through the night? Yes, and I am sure. Why? You may change your mind when you get there. Ian... You're very useful to me. And you're taking some risks. You may have to take more risks. How would you like to come on the payroll? I'd like that, fine. Then you're on. Thanks. Now that I'm on the payroll, can you tell me what it's about? What risks I'm taking? Well, you can work that out for yourself. You found that container, Ian, and you reported it to us. That container should have landed on Dorica. We went there next day and found the beach being searched. They found nothing. Well, they couldn't. No. So, last night, there were signals made to the trawlers. They must find it. So they're still searching. Who? Well, that's one of the risks you take. We don't know. We are interested in everyone who has come recently to these islands. Swanson and the three who are making the search, the colonel, the girl, and Alec Thompson. Oh, Alec has been here for years. And he's dead. But he was away for a time, wasn't he? In the Merchant Navy. <laughs> I was away in the Merchant Navy. Yes, Ian, we've uh, checked on you. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, when the signals were being made, there was one person missing from the hotel. The girl. Miss Summers? Yes. But she came back. So? Anyone who was on that shore last night didn't get off it till this morning. You want to bet? Any sum you like. Wait till you see it. She'd been out on shore somewhere. Her shoes were wet. But she said she'd been visiting the local schoolmistress. Miss Kennedy? Yes. Well, you're in luck. Here comes the school teacher now. Oh, it's you, Ian. 
Hello, Hello Katie. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Nicholson, Miss Kennedy. Good afternoon, Mr. Nicholson. How do you do? And uh, what brings you up here, Ian? I will show you, Mr. Nicholson, the island. Oh. Are you uh, on holiday, Mr. Nicholson? Oh, just for a few days. Ian's showing me the sights. Huh? Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Nicholson. Goodbye, Miss Kennedy. I, uh, I hope the wind goes down. So do I. Goodbye, Ian. Bye, Katie. Better get moving. Right. So, that's the school teacher. Aye. She's very pretty. And she seems to like you, Ian. Have you uh, ever asked her? Oh, she's settled at the schoolhouse now. She wouldn't take to a croft, not now. Well, that's all of the road. We cut across the moor now. Tell me about her. Katie? Yeah. Uh, she's a local girl, born here. Went to the little school down there. Did you? Aye. Katie went to Edinburgh, to university. Became a teacher. Got a good job at a girl's school, a private school. Where? In London or near it. Hmm? And then she came back. Why? Because she was needed. There's not so many teachers of the Gaelic. And the little ones speak nothing else. They had to be taught the English. When did she come back? <laughs> I thought you'd ask that. You're wrong. She came back a year ago. She's a friend of Mary Summers. They were together last night, and that shore is not so far from the schoolhouse. It's far enough. Just wait till you get there. This is it. This is what you marked on your map. Can't try. Would you like to have lugged a signal lamp and the power for it all this way? <laughs> no, much, no. Uh, could the signals have been made from a boat? Just off the shore there? No, no, no. You couldn't hold our boat off there. Not on last night's tide. Why not? Because you couldn't. There were two young lads came up here last summer. They were told never to take a boat out off the west side. They were university lads, and of course they knew better. And one morning our boat was found upturned on Sula. Mm. And the, uh, the lads? The tide runs fast here, too. And the undertow was strong. They'd be carried south and then out to sea. The boat was on the surface, so it fetched up on an island. It's a dangerous shore, Jim. Are you sure you want to stay here? I've got a search to make. Then you'll be here until the morning. What do you mean? Now, I'd better explain it to you. In an hour's time, this spot behind us here will be filling with the tide. Yeah? Now, the sand will look firm. But don't go on to it. Don't try to cross it. It's quick sand. And by nine o'clock, the tide will be coming in on the other side of you like a flood. Around you and behind you. In the dark, you won't find your way out. If you must stay, it's it's best that I leave you and come back in the morning to see that you're safe. Well, that sounds good, Sensian. Will you do that? Aye. Nah, be back as soon as it's light. Oh, I've uh, brought you a flask of whiskey. Ah. I'll leave it with you. Thanks very much. One other thing. The weather could turn bad and there's, there's no decent shelter. Look at your chart again. Mm -hmm. Not far from here, there's something marked... Cumulus. Uh, I, I, there it is, you see. That little mark. Oh, yes. Just up the shore. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah. The thing I'm telling you about is an old Viking grave, a kind of shallow stone thing. If it gets too cold or too wet, you could always crawl into it. it sounds almost too comfortable. And you might be grateful for it. Unless a sheep has got here before you. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you move off the shore. In the morning, I'll come for you. Goodbye, Ian. Uh, and good luck. Calling. 
Morning, Starfish. Starfish 2 to Starfish, over. Calling Starfish. Oh, drowning his blasted contraptions. Are you hearing me, Starfish? Starfish 3, I'm hearing you. Oh, it does work. Is that you, Grant? Yes, I'm listening. Where are you? On the beach. Look, it's too cold to be formal. Can we drop this Nicholson and Grant stuff? I'm Jim. <laughs> All right, Jim. This is Bill Grant. I'm on that beach, Bill. It's just as bad as Ian said. He's gone now. He's uh, coming back for me in the morning. It's just getting dark, and I'm going to start the search. But first, will you get the chart and look for a mark on the landward edge of the beach? Tumulus. Yeah, half a sec. All right, now... Cumulus, yes, I've found it. Now, I'm going to have a look for it now and make that the center of the search. Keep the channel open. Report as often as you can. I'll keep listening, watch. Right. I'm setting off now. Good luck, Jim. Bill? Yes, Jim. I'm listening. I found it. How about that spot on your map? It's a kind of old Viking grave. There's a small tunnel. Now, I'm going to try and crawl in. See if there's some shelter in there. Shelter? Well, if I've got to stay here the night, I may need it. I'm going in now. Oh. Oh. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a... Tight squeeze. Oh. Well, I'm in. Just a minute while I get my torch. It's cramped in here. Ugh, some bones. Well, it's all right. They're, they're sheep's bones. Hello. There's another tunnel. It's bigger. I'm going through. Jim. What is it? Are you armed? Of course I'm armed. I'm going through. I'm in a small workshop. Keep listening. It's dug into the sand dunes, shored up with timber. There's a workbench, and on it is a heavy signal lamp and cable. A lot of tools, spanners and things. Bill? Yes, I'm listening. Do you remember the motor part of that torpedo? The boffin said it had been specially made. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, the motor part of one of them is here on the bench. It's wired up. It can be used as a dynamo for the signal lamp or to run a transmitter. Jim, leave everything as it is and get out of there fast. Get well away and keep a watch on it. I'm just going to examine that motor. Get out. It's dark now. Get well away from it. All right. I'm going to say it's a bit of a tight fit. I should have loose some... Wait. Are you up? Yes. But I think I'm too late. There's a longboat drawn up on the beach. And there's a man guarding it. He's got a dark peak cap, Baltic style, dark sea jersey, dark trousers, sea boots, and he's holding a rifle. It was a long boat. He didn't come alone. No. How dark is it? Almost pitch dark, but there's a moon coming up. I should be able to spot the others. Get well away from there. It won't be easy, but I'm going now. rifles. They're spread out, making a search. They seem to be shooting at anything that moves. I'll get help to you. You can't. The tide's running now, and it's behind me. You can't get to this shore now. Not till morning. Keep down, Jim. Do you know what they're looking for? <laughs> they're looking for me. I've just been hit. I'm making a run for it. I'm still listening. Are you hearing me, Jim? Jim. Jim, come in, Jim. Yes. 
Yes, I can hear you. Are you hit badly? Yes, I think so. found any trace of him? No. There's always the chance they took him away with them. Yeah, there's always that chance. If he was here, as you say... He was here, at this spot, when he was first hit. Well, in the dark, it would have been best for him to run that way through the sand dunes under cover. Yeah. How far do you think he would have got before you lost contact? Well, it was only a few minutes. Well, I'll search in that direction. Oh, the major's coming. I'll carry on. Captain Grant. Yes, sir. You've been inside the grave? Uh, not yet, sir. Well, it's just as Nicholson described it to you. A complete signal post dug into the sand dunes. On a deserted beach like this, it, it must have taken months to make. Generators, power, signal lamps. Mr. Grant! Come here, will you? Quick! Excuse me, sir. Over here, Mr. Grant. Is it Jim? Aye. There's still a bit of a pulse, but not much. You have to do something quickly. Get the Major, will you? Aye. Major Williams! He's coming. What's this, Ian? My whiskey flask. I left it with him. Oh? Aye. It's empty now. Oh, he'd need it all for the pain. Have you found him, Grant? Yes, he's unconscious, sir. Very weak. Two bullet wounds. Oh, look after him, poor devil. I'll arrange to have him taken out of here. Sergeant, over here. That may take too long, Mr. Grant. The only road is more than six miles away. Well, Ian, let's hope he can stand it. He's the only one who can tell us anything. London, sir. The big idea. Thank you. William speaking, sir. Uh, did you get my report, sir? I've just received it. Uh, what did you say, sir? Bad line, this. I said I've just received it. Have you found Nicholson yet? Uh, yes, sir. He's in hospital now. The doctor's report's not too good, as well as can be expected. Who is this damn doctor? Uh, uh, Dr. Mackenzie, sir. I've had a word with him on security, uh, but something else has happened, sir. What? Nicholson described four men as being with the boat. One on guard and three hunting him. Well, we have one of them. Good. He stayed on the island, went to the schoolhouse and asked for asylum. Did he? Yes. A, a young lad, about 20. Uh, could you send an interpreter, sir? Uh, yes, of course, as soon as I can. Good. Only Grant isn't too strong on Russian, but uh, at meantime, he's, he's going to have a try. So, this is the prisoner? Yes, sir. All right, you stand up. Uh, he doesn't understand English, sir. We've tried. We'll see. What's your name? I am a seaman, sailor, a share for freedom. That's all he says, sir. I am seaman, sailor, a hare for freedom. Yeah, they didn't give Nicholson much chance of freedom. Tinis naish kto strilal. Niet. Hmm. Says he doesn't know anything about the shooting. Well, I think he's a liar, sir. Onko vrit što ti vrioš. Niet. Ja govoriu pravdu. A čevo ti prišol suda? Ja prišol svobodni mir. Ja hoću biti svobodnim. What's he say, sir? I can't altogether follow him. He says he came here to be free. Don't let him out of your sight till the interpreter arrives. No, sir. And tell Major Williams that I've gone to see Mr. Nicholson. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Grant. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Well, you're under heavy protection, old chap. 
Here, you weren't much help last night, were you? With the radio, how could I be? You get yourself shot at on Dorica and hit twice on Cantry. I can't be everywhere. No, they tell me it was a dangerous game. I brought you some thrillers. I oh, take good. it from Reed. Yes. Look, um, now that I'm full of bullet holes, perhaps your brigadier will allow you to tell me what it's all about. I'll tell you without his permission, but let's take first things first. You gave me a description of the four men who came ashore. Black peaked caps. Baltic style. That's right. Black sea jerseys, dark trousers and sea boots. One guarding the boat, three hunting you. Yeah. We have one of them. Dressed as you said. A young lad, aged about 20. Young. Yeah. Well, that'll be the one who was guarding the boat. He looked like a lad. The others were big chaps. They were spread out, making a sweep. Why didn't they find me? But you were in a sort of hollow in the dunes. You'd uh, finished a flask of whiskey. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I remember that. <laughs> it was so damn cold. Tell me about this young lad, Bill. Well, we're waiting for an interpreter. Seems he's stayed ashore. Gave himself up in the morning at the schoolhouse asking for asylum. For the schoolhouse? Does that mean something to you? It might. Now, answer my question. What's it all about? Yeah. Well, it's been a puzzle for a year, Jim. But the pieces are beginning to fit together at last. The finding of the container was a very important piece. First piece? No, no, not the first. But we'll come to that. It's been known for several years that some of the foreign trawlers patrolling off the Western Isles are spy ships. They stay put out there in all weathers, whether there are fish there or not. They have a right to be there. They're on the high seas. Ostensibly, they're fishing. Actually, they're watching the rocket range. Mm. Now, we know that some of them are engaged in a very dangerous operation. The finding of the container told us that. So did the signaling. And the attack on you. There's someone in touch with the trawlers. I know that. It's a reception party of some kind. Yeah, there has to be a reception party. But for the moment, we must let them get on with it because there's something more important at the end. For a long time, and with infinite patience, we've been trying to break the spy rings inside the UK. Ah. Now, from time to time, we've had some success. But in other equally important directions in this last year, we've had failures. Come up against a blank wall. How's that? Well, we'd penetrate a network, link by link, and then, unexpectedly, the next link in the chain, the important one, would just vanish. Now, in this game, both sides usually know what's happening. One side takes steps to stop the bolt holes. The other side tries to arrange new ones. We thought we'd stop them all. And suddenly these people, the... Well, the next in line would just vanish. No trace of them at airports or at any frontier on the continent. I see. When you found this container, it had two important items. There was the usual money to pay the reception committee and spares for transmitters and so on. But there was also foreign money and a foreign passport. The passport was not for leaving Britain... Oh. But it was for entry into another country. Yes, I think I've got it. Yeah. Whoever the passport was meant for is simply to come here, get aboard one of the trawlers, be taken straight behind the Iron Curtain. Exactly. It's no longer necessary for a spy to risk crossing the frontiers. An escape route. Yeah, a reception party, an escape route, and very well organized. That container wasn't the first to arrive. There was part of one in that signal post. No doubt when we find the other signal post, there will be part of another. How many more have come? Well, I don't know. Well, the islands are so deserted, so remote, it would be easy for anyone to come here. From anywhere. And be taken away. All arranged by the reception group. We've uh, one or two good suspects. Swanson, who brings people up here for fishing trips. The colonel, who owns a quiet island. His niece, Mary Summers. Alec Thompson, who was a trawlerman. And who was killed. Yeah. Hmm. Look, Jim, take a look at these photographs again. Tell me if you've ever seen any of the people in any of the pictures on these islands. Ah, come in, Ian. Nice to see you. The doctor said I could see you. How do you feel? Oh, not so bad. I have to thank you for coming back for me. Well, I warned you, but I said I'd come back. Oh, I've... Uh, Brought your present. Oh. I filled the flask for you. <laughs> I think it saved my life, Ian. Aye. So I want you to keep it. 
Thanks very much. Look, Ian, while you're here, would you take a look at these photographs? Uh, they're just street snaps, people passing. I want you to look at each snap and tell me if you've seen any of the people before. No, eh? Uh, is this one Mr. Swanson? Behind the woman? Do you think it is? Mm, could be. Not very clear. Oh, yeah, I know these two lads. It's the two I told you about, Jim, the university students. Oh, yeah? The ones whose boat was found upturned on Sula. Where did you get this, Mr. Grant? Tell me about them, Ian. Well, they came here last summer for the fishing. Mr. Nolan and Mr. Peter, on holiday from the university. Uh, they wanted to take our boat out one evening off the west shore. I warned them, but they wouldn't be told. Next morning, the boat was found upturned and smashed on Sula. And the two lads? Well, don't. When was this? Last summer. A year ago? Ah. Thank you, Ian. Jim. That photograph was taken three months ago. What? In Warsaw. In Warsaw? Let's see. Their names are Nolan and Peters, but they were not university students. Thank you, Ian. Uh, look, Jim and I have got something to talk about. Don't mind just... Uh... Oh, I, oh, of course. Uh, will I be seeing you at the hotel? Yes, this evening. Look after yourself, Jim. Come and see you tomorrow. Bye, Ian. And uh, thanks again for the class. Ah, it was nothing. When did he tell you about those two lads? Last night. It was just a cautionary tale about how dangerous the Western Shore is. We were close on their tails about a year ago. They just vanished. It seems they came up here and are now safely away. And their boat was returned, smashed. I thought he was just trying to keep me off that beach. Yes, yeah, so did I. You suspected him? Mm. Yes, I did for a time. And the way he came back this morning to search for you. He's worried having left you there. I trust him. Well, you'll have to. We won't get far without him. Mm, that's true. Well, it's no longer a supposition. He's given us the first positive lead. Yes. We have a passport that was sent for the next one out, just waiting for a photograph and a name, and there is a Dr. Lawrence due up here at any time. Do you know him? No. No, the name means nothing as yet. But I think it's time we put the passport to work. I'm going to see your friend, Miss Summers. Bill, yeah? you think the passport is for Dr. Lawrence? Well, he hasn't arrived. It could be used for anyone the syndicate thinks is in danger. I am going to put Miss Summers in danger. I thought you didn't take risks. Well, if you will get yourself into trouble, old chap, what else can I do? <laughs> afternoon, Miss Summers. I didn't see you at the hotel this morning. No, I thought you'd gone to your island. Not today. I'm going to find my uncle. He's gone down to the harbor trying to buy a boat. I thought he had a boat. It was hired from Eric Swanson with Alec Thompson to handle it. Now that Alec's gone, Swanson won't let him have it. So he's going to buy one? Yes. Let's walk along the beach. Right. Mr. Grant? Yes. Have you come for the fishing? Or the shooting? I'm afraid I don't fish. Or shoot. What do you do? Rest. And my doctor said I needed rest and lots of quiet. You're from London? Yes. Oh, but he's a Scots doctor, so he suggested I came up here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been ill? No, no. No, I was just overworked. And what is your work? Hmm? I'm an engineer. Ah, you know about engines? Yes. If my uncle does buy a boat, will you help us? I know about engines. There's not much about navigation. I'm told you have to know these waters very well. Oh, I know how to get there. If you can manage the engine. What happened to Alec Thompson? He, um, he had a row with my uncle and went off. Eric Swanson says he'll be back. 
But your uncle won't wait. <laughs> Uncle's very sweet, but he's very impatient. Um, just a moment. Mm-hmm. What is it? Yes, I can see him from here, down at the quay, see? I think he's still haggling about a boat. Uh, do you mind if we wait here? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, not at all. It's a nice day for doing nothing. For resting? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You think your uncle's buying that boat? The one tied up at the quay? Trying to buy it. It's rather a big one, isn't it? Oh, uncle doesn't know much about boats, and he's very impatient. He'll take anything he can get. Well, wouldn't that one be rather well, difficult to handle? No, these island boats are very safe. And if you don't fish, you must find something to do. Yes, yes, it's rather quiet here. Do you like it? <laughs> Not really. It bores me, rather. There isn't much company on the islands. No, no, there isn't, is there? If you're going to help us, Mr. Grant, what's your first name? Bill. I'm Mary Summers. I'm glad to meet you, Mary. I've been a bit lost for company myself. Look, if your uncle's still busy with his boat, how about going back to the hotel for a drink? I'd like that. Mr. Nicholson. Yes, Doctor? Major Williams to see you. Oh, splendid. Let them all come. Are you sure? You've had two visitors already. Oh, I feel all right. Show them in. As you wish. Major Williams. Thank you. Well, how are you feeling, Jim? Getting better by the minute. Oh, good. Well, some of your things. We took everything from your pockets that might identify you and... Well, I thought you might need some of them now. Cigarettes, lighter. Ah, thanks very much. Oh, did you bring the chart I was marking? Yes. There it is. Good. Yes, here's the signal post I visited. Uh-huh. It's the one the signals were made from to the trawler. Now, if the Dorica Beach is the target point, the trawler would require two signal posts, one north and one south of the position, in order to get a proper bearing on the beach by night. Uh-huh. Well, the one we found is to the south, so the other one should be to the north, and it shouldn't be too difficult to plot. Yeah, I agree. We jumped ahead of you. <laughs> Did a bit of chart work myself this morning. I looked for another suitable point on shore and for another old Viking grave. And there it is. It's perfectly. Good Lord. It's on the Colonel's Island, on Dorica. That's right. To the north of the beach where the container was supposed to land. Are you going to search it? No, not yet. Now, the orders from London are to watch and wait. Have you spoken to the brigadier? Uh-huh. Well, naturally, he asked about you. Uh-huh. He said that while you're in here, Bill Grant must take over the investigation and keep it going. And he already has. Oh. Well, where is he? He's gone back to the little hotel. He's interested in the passport business, and he wants to put Mary Summers at risk. Oh. I think that's a good idea. Why? Well, the organization's been too cosy. It was upset a few days ago, but... Well, it must be upset again. On instructions? Instructions from London. Ah, they say something will happen soon. Well, it's it's too late to have suspects. We must know who to watch, and we need some action. Well, why not Swanson? Why choose her? Well, she's more likely to make a mistake. Well, the last time a mistake was made, Thompson got killed. Uh, he was a menial. She may be more important. A girl? Her uncle may be more important. Ah, uh, yeah. So when she feels she's suspect at such an important time, they'll have to do something quickly. <sighs> I wish I was out of here. I'll keep you in touch. You just concentrate on getting better. And you'll be staying for another week, Bill. Oh, perhaps a little longer. Well, here's to your rest cure. Thank you. Excuse me, Miss Summers. Yes? Your uncle has just returned. He wants to see you in his room. Now? Aye. He asked me to say so. Would you forgive me, Bill? Hmm. See you later. Yes, of course. I don't suppose I'll be long. May I have a word with you, Mr. Grant? Is it about my room? Yeah. As you know, it was booked for another guest who hadn't come. Dr. Lawrence? Aye. Well, I've had a word with Mr. Swanson, and it seems he's coming tomorrow. So after tonight... I have to move. Uh, now, don't worry. I'll find you a place. Oh, that's very kind of you. Ian McLeod's in the bar. He was asking for you. Oh, thanks. I'll join him. Oh, there you are, Bill. You were looking for me, Ian? Aye. 
Uh, will you have one? Uh, not just now, thanks. I've been having one with uh, Miss Summers. Oh, uh, a nice lassie. Yeah, mm, she is. Um, I have some news for you, Bill. I was up at the loch an earlier. Loch? Ah, the bee loch, doing some fishing. And I was using the net. It got caught on something and I pulled it ashore. I think it's part of one of these torpedo things. A container? Yeah. Have you got your car? It's outside. I'll take you there. It's only three miles in now. It's just over the brow there. Not far. It's a pull in here. I tied a line to it and threw it back. I'll get it out for you. Ah, there you are. What do you think? At first I thought it might be something left over from the war. Uh, it's part of a container, all right. Without the motor. Could you judge how long it's been in there? Oh, well, by the look of it and the weed growing on it, I'd say it's been there... All through the winter, eight or nine months. So they've been at this for a long time. Aye. Uh, Look, Ian. Tonight at the hotel, I... I want you to help me with something. I'd be more than pleased to. There may be a bit of a risk. What sort of risk? Well, as a fisherman, you should know. When you set a trap, you can get caught in it yourself. Oh, <laughs> Let's throw this thing back in the water. Good evening, Mr. Grant. Good evening, Miss McCauley. Have you seen Miss Summers? She went out about an hour ago with her uncle. Ah, thank you. Oh, well, I'll probably see her later. There's a good crowd in the bar tonight, Mr. Grant. Ian McLeod's there. Ah, good. I want to see him. I'm thinking of taking up fishing. Is that so? After you, Mr. Grant. Ah, oh, hello, Ian. Oh, hello, Bill. Um, do, you, do you know my cousin Davy? Davy McNeil. Hello, Davy. Okay, I, I was just ordering. What do you have? With you? I'll, I'll have a whiskey. Uh, three large whiskies. I, I was telling Ian about the Russian. What Russian? A damn great Russian. Ah, he was uh, just a wee young Russian, Davy. He was not. He was a damn great big Russian. He goes up to the wee schoolhouse and do you know what he says? He says it to Katie Kennedy. He says, Solomon. Freedom. He says it in English. And he's a, a damn great big Russian. He's a wee Russian, Dave. He's not. Yeah, do you know what I think? I think he's off one of them damn trawlers. Ah, well, maybe. Yeah. Here, Ian. Watch my drink. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> it's all over the island about him giving himself up. Would be. He went to the school of... Ian, I was watching Swanson and his party over there. They didn't seem interested in what your cousin was saying. Well, Swanson was asking... Look, right. Swanson. He certainly takes people to the islands. We're running a further check on him. He's expecting one Dr. Lawrence. Now, we don't know who this Dr. Lawrence is. Not by that name, anyway. So, he is the man to watch. What about the second signal post? We've plotted it, sir. Grant's going to make a search as soon as possible. It's on Dorica, the Dark Island, the same one the container should have fetched up on. Is it now? See that he leaves it just as it is. We don't want it disturbed. Now, listen carefully, Williams. Whatever happens, you must not interfere with these trawlers. Well, they sent a boat ashore, sir. They, they come inside territorial waters. One of them does. And you think you could deal with it? Don't try. Don't tangle with it. You'd get a very bad shock. And then it'd pull out to sea and scream the place down. Violation, international incident. We don't want that. When the time comes, we can frighten it off. And what is left on shore is what I want. Yes, of course I... Major Williams, I want to impress on you the importance of this show. I think I should tell you this. The department is at a point in a very big operation indeed, where we feel from experience that some persons have been warned 
and are about to be moved to safety. If we can reach them first, or better still, and I think this may happen, if they can be gathered together in one place and delivered to us, we shall be in among the most important members of the opposition. Has there been a serious leakage, sir? I think they have access, direct access, to our plans. We may know very soon, and you know what that means. Yes, sir. So will you warn Grant? I will, sir. And now, before you go back, we have some documents for you. Information on the people Grant asked about, I've already given you the gist of it. Oh, yes. George Hammond made the check. I've asked him to bring the papers along for you. He'll be here at any moment. What exactly are Mr. Hammond's duties in the department, sir? Why do you ask? It'd be helpful to know. In talking to Grant. Hammond is a very senior member of the department. He runs checks on all suspects and on information sent in from the field. And he's exceedingly thorough. He's also responsible for intelligence summaries for the department. Grant knows him very well. Have no fear of that. Ah. Come in, George. Uh, you've not met you to George Hammond, Major Williams. How do you do, Mr. Hammond? Oh, afternoon, Major. Uh, I have the papers here for you. Oh, thank A you. A check on all people mentioned by Captain Grant. Uh, Alec Thompson, Eric Swanson, Colonel Jameson... Mary Summers. Uh, the brigadier's already told me about them. Uh, and a check on some of the people Swanson has had up there in the past year. None of it means much to us, but it may be useful to Grant. Have you found anything on Dr. Lawrence since you spoke to me last? Uh, well, we think we know who he is, sir, but uh, we aren't quite satisfied yet. He's on one of the photographs sent with Grant. Uh, Major, well, where is Captain Grant staying? Well, I'm not sure at the moment. He's being moved out of the hotel today to make room for this, Dr. Lawrence. Then we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Williams. You'll warn Grant and Nicholson that they must not get involved with the trawlers. Leave that to us. Yes, sir. And that young sailor you have up there, keep a close watch on him. We will, sir. Well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Hammond. Goodbye. Uh, would you like me to go up there? No, George. I need you at this end. Uh, well, I was thinking of this Lawrence character. Uh, there's no doctor of that name on any of the ministry lists. Uh, but he may be one of the men we're watching, Grenville. You see, I, I know him by sight. Grant doesn't. Captain Grant does know him by sight, George. And if he's on one of the photographs, Nicholson will know him too. We have plenty to do down here. We should be getting a report on the second signal post soon. Grant's going there today. grave should be somewhere around here. All right, let's take a look. Oh, I'll be glad to get out of this wind, Ian. Ah, it's strong today. Now it should be just up here in the marker. On the what? The marker. It's what we call the boggy part, here on the edge of the sand. Ah, yes. Ah, here it is. An old Viking grave, just like the one on Cantrai. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, we'll have to be more careful than you and Jim were. I'm not keen on ending up in hospital. Well, there was no one in sight when I left Jim last time. There's no one in sight now. On land or sea. Oh, that's true enough. Anyhow, this time there must be no mistakes. Do you feel like handling my gun again? Yes, any time. I'll take it then. Now, you keep a lookout while I go inside. Stay by the entrance. If anyone comes or you sight a boat... Warn me, then scarper into the dunes and cover me as I come out. I'll do that. You're right. Yeah. There is another tunnel, so I'm going on. Well, I'll stay on watch. There's uh, someone else to see you, Mr. Nicholson. The school teacher. Miss Kennedy? Hey. Oh. Come in, Miss Kennedy. How nice of you to visit the sick like this. Well, I'd heard you'd had an accident, Mr. Nicholson. I believe it happened down at Contrai. Yes, it did. Uh, was it Ian who got you into this trouble? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, what happened? Oh, I got lost. I fell. I bruised myself rather badly, but I'm all right. I may be up and hobbling tomorrow. <laughs> well, that is good news. <laughs> oh, 
cake here. I brought you a cake. Oh. You can have it for your tea. Oh, thank you very much. How very kind of you. Oh, by the way, I met Mary Summers the other day. She's a friend of yours, isn't she? Oh, yes. She, she was asking for you. Oh, that was nice of her. What's that in your bag? A recorder? <laughs> the children are having their music lesson this morning. You uh, play the recorder yourself? Well, enough to teach it. So you read music, then? Uh, well, yes, I do. Why? I wonder, would you uh, hand me my jacket, please? Uh, well, of course. Yeah? Thanks. I've, uh, I've got a little... Yes, here it is. A little snatch of music. I can't read it. I wonder if you'd play it to me. Oh, it's not very well written. No. Can you read it? I think I know it. It goes like this. I've heard it being whistled, Mr. Nicholson. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Where have you heard it? I've heard it several times. At night, I've heard it coming from the shore, where you were hurt. The uh, young sailor who gave himself up at the schoolhouse. He whistled it when he arrived. I see. Why did he do that, do you think? Well, I don't know. When he came to the door, he whistled it. He seemed to think it would mean something. And did it? Did it mean anything to you, Miss Kennedy? No, Mr. Nicholson. Why should it? What did you do? I uh, handed him over to the soldiers at the rocket range. Are you all right? Yeah. I'm coming up. Mm. It's claustrophobic in here. That Ooh. there now. No ambush? No. What did you find in there? Oh, it's a signaling post, just like the one Jim Nicholson found. Dug into the sand. Signaling apparatus, the lot. And a tin of fresh sandwiches. Ham. Someone has been here recently. You know, that's bright of you. Me? Oh. <laughs> ah, well, it wasn't a Russian. Or there have been caviar sandwiches. Uh, that's true enough. Here, look, I've brought out a bit of loot. Binoculars. There you are, Ian, for you. For me? Yeah, be my guest. In a couple of days, the owner will have no use for them. Hmm. Oh, they're powerful. Huh? Yeah, let's try them. What's that up there, Ian? Oh, that's our skewer. By the way, is this island any use for bird watching? No, not much. I saw a pair of St. Kilda wrens here once nesting. Is that interesting? <laughs> to some people. Ian, what's that over there on the moor? It's an old house, isn't it? Aye, Jim was interested in that when we were here together. Was he now? Well, what's it doing here, anyway? Oh, a family called Morrison had it. They left it six or seven years ago. They were the last on the island. They left it before I came back. Let's go and take a look at it. I don't think you should get up yet, Mr. Nicholson. If I can sit up, I can stand up. Uh, you can try. Maybe moving a boat will teach you a lesson. Ah, oh, hello, sir. London and back in one day. Yes, well, you'll excuse us, Doctor. Hmm? Oh, of course, Major. Uh, will you see he stays in that bed? Yeah. I'll try. You're trying to get up. I'd have been up if you hadn't come back. Where's Grant? I haven't seen him since this morning. He was going to the signal post. He has some other ploy of his own. He hasn't been keeping in touch? No. No, he hasn't. I had a very firm briefing in London. It means keeping in close touch. 
If you see Grant before I do, you must tell him this. On no account to tangle with the trawlers or anything from the sea. Brigadier's orders. Does he think I tangled with them? I told him exactly what happened. Anyway, London will deal with the trawlers if necessary. He's interested only in what we can capture on the ground. Did he say who we're after? He sent some papers for Grant. Thinks they'll be useful to him. Didn't Grant say anything about a, a definite suspect? No. No, he didn't. No. Oh. Right. Instructions from London. Grant is not to touch anything at the signal post. Leave it as found. <laughs> well, it's a bit late for that. He's probably been there and back by now. Oh. Last. Well, it can't be helped. A second point. He has to watch for Dr. Lawrence. He's the main line of our inquiry. Mm -hmm. And one other point. Make sure Grant understands this. The brigadier thinks that they're too well organized. He suspects that they receive warnings that our plans are being passed on to them. By whom? That's the trouble with this department. They never tell us the facts. Everything's kept in London. In my experience, Jim, we usually know more than we think. One fact and the rest click into place. You had any surprise visitors? Yes. The school teacher. And listen to this. When the young sailor went to the schoolhouse, he thought he was making a contact. How'd you know that? Well, she said he whistled that tune when he gave himself up at the schoolhouse. But she handed him over to us. Yes, I know. All the same, we should keep a close eye on him and on her. Has the interpreter arrived yet? No. Well, why not? The brigadier's in charge of this operation. He knows what our resources are. Someone been watching the boat? No. But I've learned this. The colonel is trying to buy a boat, a big one. What? It could carry eight or nine people. Oh, hell. What's wrong? <laughs> well, I've been warned there may be more than one person going away, that this time the, the escape route may be very busy. And Bill Grant's out there by himself. I'm getting up. What good can you do? Well, at least I can start to be mobile. We need to have somebody with him. <sighs> Give me a hand, sir, will you? You can try that with the doctor, not with me. All right. Well, who's been bringing you cake? The school teacher. Hmm. Yet you're prepared to suspect her. How ungallant. Well, it was to her that the sailor went. Well, to her schoolhouse, anyway. And she's a friend of Mary Summers. Hello there, Mary. This is a nice, quiet spot you found. Yes, it's very restful, Bill. I've been sitting here for an hour at least, watching the waves, watching the birds. What's that one up there? A cormorant? <laughs> no, that's a black-back gull. Then, uh, that one out there is a cormorant. And that cormorant is a great northern diver. <laughs> How can you be sure at this distance? Oh, by the way it moves, the way it flies... You're quite an expert. Oh, my uncle's the expert. He's making the island a sanctuary. A bird sanctuary? Of course. Mm. It's an expensive hobby. Oh, not really. It's not an enormous island. My offer as a nautical engineer is still open. Well, then I'm going to take you on it right away, because Uncle has bought a boat. Will you take me out there this evening? I'll try. Have you seen something? <laughs> no, no. Would you like to walk me down to the harbour, Bill? I'd be delighted. Is it to look at the boat? Yes. Oh, will you give me a hand up? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are. you. <sighs> ah, it's quite a walk. Uh, may I go back for my coat? Oh, you don't need a coat. Come along. Good afternoon, sir. I'm the hotel manager, Macaulay. Good afternoon. Uh, I understand you have a room for me, uh, Dr. Lawrence. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I mind the name well. Now, let me see. Uh, Mr. Swanson booked you in, Dr. Lawrence. Yes, sir. Is he in? Uh, no, no, he's out at the moment. Ah, here's your booking. I didn't know when to expect you. Oh, I'm sorry. I... You see, there's a gentleman using your room. Oh, really? Oh, it's only temporary, sir. I'll see him right away and have his stuff moved out. No, I don't want to trouble him. It's no trouble at all, Doctor. Well, there's no need to hurry, Mr. McCauley. I have a, a visit to make before I need the room. Would you be leaving your wee bag? I'll take it up for you. No, no, I'll keep it. Will I tell Mr. Swanson you've arrived? Yes, uh, tell him uh, I'm visiting friends, would you? And uh, tell him also I'll phone him here this evening. I'll expect you back then, Dr. Lawrence. Yes. I'll certainly be back. So, this is 
the boat. Yes. Do you like it? Do you like her name? Aronce. Yes. Yes, very nice. Does it mean anything? It means deserted island, lonely island. <laughs> it's rather appropriate. Do you think you can handle her? Well, I can handle her if you could look after the engine. Can we go aboard? Yes, let's. Here, give me your hand. All right. Uh, that's it. Oh. oh, I like boats. Do we take her out this evening? Let's sit here out of the wind. Yes, we'd like to take her out. Uncle's rather anxious to get to the island today. Why? Well, he hasn't been there since... Well, since Alec Thompson went away. I see. Uh, how is Mr. Nicholson? Should I know? Well, I heard he had another accident. Another accident? Oh, I hope I said something. Alec Thompson almost shot him, didn't you know? <laughs> yes, yes, I heard about it. Well, that was an accident. This other was just foolishness. I heard you visited him. Oh, I took him some books. If it wasn't an accident, um, what happened to him that was so foolish? Oh, he was out in the dark. He fell over some rocks. Or so he says. Um, you're a friend of Ian McLeod's. Oh, I was introduced to him in the bar. If you're here three days, you know everyone. <laughs> yes, yes, it's like that. Well, you'll come over to the island this evening. Yeah. Yes, of course, we can. Thanks. Oh, that one is a cormorant. I wasn't looking at that. Hmm? There's someone over there I think I know on the little road. He looks as if he's just arrived. Yes. Were you expecting someone? No. No, I wasn't. Mary, will you excuse me? I'll see you back at the hotel. Oh, you are up, Mr. Nicholson. Yes, Doctor. In theory, I'm up. Uh, there's another visitor to see you, Ian McLeod. Ah, send him in. Mr. McLeod. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Hello, Ian. You're out of bed. <laughs> How are you feeling? Well, the arm's a bit stiff and the shoulder. I think the bandage is too tight. They do it deliberately to keep you docile. <laughs> I so I've heard. You hate the hospital, don't you? Anyway, it's going to be moving about. I, from the bed to the chair, and no further than We'll that. see. Have you seen Bill Grant? No, no. He's gone off to see a man he thought he recognized down by the harbor. Miss Summers told me. She was at the hotel waiting for him to come back. Oh? Well, I have news for you, by the way. Uh, her uncle has bought the Orangey. It's a biggish boat. Capable of going out to sea. Out to the trawlers? Aye. And further. Mm. Bill is going to take it out for her this evening. He mustn't, Ian. I have new instructions for him. I want to see him now. When did you last see him? When we came back from the signal post on Doraka. He left me at the harbour and went round to the hotel by himself. You say he wasn't with the girl when you got there yourself? No. Mm. They'd met earlier and gone to look at the new boat. Mm. Miss Summers said he spotted someone he knew and went off to speak to him. Didn't Mary Summers know the man? Don't think so. Or if she did, she didn't let her on. She said it was somebody who'd just arrived. Could it have been this Dr. Lawrence? No, he wouldn't have recognized him. No, no, that's so. Someone he thought he knew. Mm, it worries me, Ian. Did you look for him? For Bill, I mean. I. And then when I couldn't find him, I thought he must have come here. That's important, Ian. We must get to the hotel. Now, you're in no condition to it's go It's my there. arm and shoulder, not my legs. If we had transport... Now, you still couldn't make it. Then I want you to look for Bill Grant. Whatever he's doing, whoever he's with, bring him here. Come with him. Don't let him out of your sight. Uh, I won't come back till I find him. Thanks, Ian. Oh, ask the doctor to look in, would you? Uh, yes, I will. Oh, uh, would you have a word with Mr. Nicholson, doctor? Yes. Uh, goodbye, Jim. Bye. Yes, what is it, Mr. Nicholson? Will you phone the rocket site and ask for a car? You're not fit. Just ask them to send a car. Mr. McCauley. Oh, uh, Mac. Oh, it's you, yes. Have you seen Mr. Grant? No, I have not. I've been watching for him. That Dr. Lawrence has arrived at last. Oh, has he? You're sure Mr. Grant hasn't been in? You're quite sure. His key's still there, look. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, that's funny, he must have taken it. Then he'll be up in his room. I'll go up and see. Aye. That's very strange.
driver. Yes, sir. Was Captain Grant in touch with the camp? Uh, no, sir. The Major thought he was with you. Keep a lookout for him. Draw the dog for that, sir. Hey! What is it? That foreign sailor. Where? Down on the shore. Take a look. I could have sworn I saw him, sir. Down there on the beach, but there's no one there now. Let's get on to the hotel. Oh. Sorry, sir. Must be seeing things. Pull up by the front door, will you? Yes, sir. Oh, will I help you, sir? No, 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 thanks. Just wait here. Jim! Jim, I, I hoped it was you. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Jim, I've been up to Bill Grant's room. I, I locked the door. I forgot the key. You better come up. Bill's dead. That's how Ian found him, sir. In the chair. And the passport lying on the bed. You say his revolver was also on the bed, but that it hadn't been fired. Oh, here it is. Mr. McLeod, you... You say he planted this passport on someone the night before. I me just... He did, yes. I, I waited in his room while he did it. I think Grant was disappointed there'd been no immediate reaction to the plant. There's no doubt it caused his death. Poor devil. Well, what have you done so far? Well, Ian very sensibly locked his room at the outset. I've left it locked and told McCauley, the manager, that uh, he's ill and mustn't on any account be disturbed. You can scarcely keep the room locked much longer. No. I've warned Dr. McKenzie... When it's quiet at the hotel, we can have him taken out on a stretcher and brought here by ambulance. Yes, that seems best. Did you know that the Russian sailor had gone? My driver thought he saw him down by the shore last night. What happened? Well, very few people knew he was in the camp. And also, it seems that he speaks very good English. Does he? Mm. Good God. After he'd managed to get out, he walked down to the gate and chatted the corporal. In English, called as a cucumber. <laughs> well, the corporal mistook him for an islander. So what happened? Well, the sailor said he'd been in the camp to see me, then he simply walked out. It was just getting dark. But if he speaks good English, he must have been left on the island to make arrangements. Yes, it looks like it now. By the by, I have a call through to London. Is there anything else you can tell me? Is this Dr. Lawrence arrived? Apparently, yes. The hotel manager told Ian McLeod last night. Hmm. Anyone seen him? No. Well, Grant saw someone near the harbour he recognised. That might have been Lawrence. Unlikely. I, I don't think Grant knew him. Brigadier on the line, sir. Oh, thank you, Wilcox. I'll see Dr. McKenzie in, sir, and uh, take him to the hotel. Right, Jim. Goodbye, Mr. McLeod. Goodbye, Major. Morning, sir. William speaking. Morning, Williams. I've bad news, I'm afraid. Oh? Captain Grant has been killed. Good God. When was this? Last night, sir. It had to do with the passport. He planted it, put it in one of the bedrooms. Uh, when he was shot, the passport was found beside him. Have you any idea who was responsible? No, sir. Now, I was with you in London yesterday, and after I came back, Captain Grant wasn't in contact. Uh, another thing, the young sailor from the trawler escaped last night. Was this before Grant was killed? Yes, sir. Any newcomers to the island? Yes, sir. Dr. Lawrence has arrived. And we have information that Captain Grant saw someone he knew down by the harbour. He went off to speak to him. Nicholson was wondering if it uh, could have been Lawrence, sir. No, Grant wouldn't have made contact with Lawrence. If he was prepared to speak to a newcomer, it must have been someone else. Someone he had no cause to suspect. I see. This intrigues me. I'd better be with you, I think. Oh, good, sir. I'll fly up this morning. And Williams... Yes, sir? I want you to lay on a force to go to that island tonight, to Dorica. Do it quietly. Choose 24 of your best men, armed, and two boats. And wait till I arrive. Yes, sir. He's running a temperature, Mr. McCauley, and um, he said you wanted the room. Uh, but I wouldn't put out a sick man. Well, the doctor wants him in hospital. Well, if the doctor wants it that way... The new guest has arrived, then? The Dr. Lawrence, I. He booked in yesterday. But he didn't come back last night. He said he had friends to visit. Did he? Aye. Well, that's the ambulance away. Will you excuse me, Mr. Nicholson? Of course. 
Oh, Ian, I want you to go over everything Bill Grant did yesterday. Everything he said to you. Well, he didn't say very much. And I told you what we did. We went to this other signal post in Dorica. He searched it. He said it was much the same as the one you found. And uh, he spotted that old croft house. You know, the one we saw the first time we went there, just behind the beach. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, I should do. We were just about to be shot at. Now, well, we took a look in it. It was empty, and then we came back across the island, over to here, and uh, we left him to come down to the hotel. Mm. Did you see him again? No, I never saw him again. Alive. When you were with him, did he talk about meeting a friend or expecting one? No. About the passport, have you really no idea which room he went to? No, I have not. But I, I think maybe it was Swanson's. Bill was armed, Ian. He was in his own room. And from his position in the chair, he could see the door. Yet there was someone in the room with him. Someone he let get close to him and behind him. That wasn't Swanson. Someone he trusted. Mm. Miss Summer. No, I don't think so. He was taking her over to the island that night. If she was involved, it could have been done there. No, it, it must have been someone else. Come out with me to the phone box and uh, keep an eye open in case Swanson comes back. Ah, oh, Mr. McCauley. Aye, Mr. Nicholson. Is Mr. Swanson in? No, he's not long gone out. Has Dr. Lawrence come back? No, he hasn't been back at all. Mr. Swanson asked the same thing and then went out to meet him, I believe. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Let me in, please. You are Dr. Lawrence? Yes. Can you identify yourself? Yes, I was to show you this. Uh. Good. Good. I've been expecting you for three days, Dr. Lawrence. There is nothing to worry about. We have one of the men from the trawlers ashore. Everything will go very smoothly. Now, there are some things you must have. A life jacket in case there's any trouble on our way to the island. What island? One further west. A shorter journey to the trawlers. They'll send a long boat for you. Oh, I see. And here is money. You'll put that in your bag. What sort of money is this? You are going to Riga. There you will be met. Now, your passport. Do you have the photographs? Yes. Here they are. They are very good. And now I have to fix the photograph and the stamp and fill in your passport. It will take a little time. Uh, the brigadier has arrived, sir. Ah. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Williams. What's happened about Captain Grant? His body's in the camp, sir. Do you wish to see it? No, not yet. Later. Where's Captain Nicholson? He's outside with Miss McLeod. Uh, for intelligence to you, sir, he passes as Mr. Nicholson. For this operation, he must assume his rank or he'll be in trouble. He's Captain Nicholson. Yes, sir. Bring them in, then. Captain Nicholson? Miss McLeod? Ah, Nicholson. We meet at last. Good afternoon, sir. May I introduce you, McLeod? I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. McLeod, and to thank you for all your help. Oh, not at all. How's your arm, Nicholson? Oh, it's mending, sir. Good. Now, gentlemen, it is my opinion that Captain Grant was killed because of a leakage of our plans. And that leak may be within our own department. If Grant recognized his murderer, then that is so. Keep that fact uppermost in your minds. I've taken certain steps to deal with this dangerous possibility. One of them is that we strike tonight... Quickly, quietly, and in strength. Because we are faced with a very carefully planned operation. Major Williams, have you chosen your men? Uh, yes, sir. Plus the sergeant and the corporal. Good. Two boats. Yes, sir. Let me see the chart. Nicholson? Uh, yes, sir. This is the first signal post we found. Just here, sir. Mm. That was where you got shot, eh? That's it, sir. 
And here's the second post. It was examined by... by Bill Grant and Mr. McLeod. It's to the end of the island on which the container should have beached. Dorica, the dark island. And there's an old deserted house back some distance from the beach about here, sir. Captain Grant and Mr. McLeod inspected it yesterday. Mr. McLeod? It's the old Morrison Croft, sir. Uh, they've been away from there, oh, six or seven years. Any other buildings on the island? No, no one lives there at all, no. Hmm. Where do these trawlers usually lie? Out here, sir. The signal posts have been left intact? Yes, sir. Then all is set. We must allow their operation to proceed. So we must move in darkness. We must be well prepared and know what we are about Major Williams, I want two good men, not from your party, two extra men, to watch the southern signal post tonight. If there are signals, they're not to interfere. They just watch and take the signal a prisoner on radio instructions. Yes, sir. The other points are all on this island, uh, Dorica. We'll have to land there in force in darkness. If you'll excuse me, sir, hmm? we'll have to make uh, this area in daylight and tie up. And then we can push across uh, this channel when the light is gone. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. That looks quite secure. Major Williams, you, Nicholson, and Mr. McLeod will take one boat and 20 men. You will land here. One party under your command will make a sweep of the island to ensure that no one leaves it. I want sentries posted. Sir? The other party under your command, Nicholson, will surround the signal post and... Uh, Captain Grant brought the miniature radios up with him, didn't he? Uh, yes, sir. Nicholson, you will take one. There's a photo reconnaissance plane standing by at Ben Becula. If a trawler or any kind of boat shows up, you will alert the plane. They're standing by on your frequency. Call sign is starfish to aircraft. Yes, sir. If signals are made and a trawler gets into position, alert the aircraft and it'll fly in, drop flares and take photographs. And scare the trawler off. And then we will deal with the people on the island. I want no one, and I mean no one, to leave before I arrive. How are you getting to the island, sir? I'll take the second boat and the four spare men. The islands are very tricky, sir. If no one can pilot you there in the dark... Well, I have, sir. I'd get my cousin David McNeil to take you. He could do it blindfold. Thank you again, Mr. McLeod. What time does it get dark? Oh, about nine o'clock, sir. I think I shall get the bigger boat moving about eight o'clock. We'll be running against a heavy tide. Well, let's meet here at seven. Major Williams, I'd like to inspect the men you've chosen. We'll see you at seven then, sir. Yes. Come on in. Well, it's quiet today, isn't it? Hi. Have you been waiting, gentlemen? What will you be drinking? Oh, two whiskies, please. I was saying, the uh, hotel is very quiet today, Mr. McCauley. Aye, they're all away at the fishing. It's not unusual on a day like this. There you are, Mr. Nicholson. Uh, how is Mr. Grant? Oh, there's the phone. Excuse me. <laughs> how is Mr. Grant, he says. Yes. Have you seen your cousin? Davy, yes, I've spoken to him. He'll keep quiet and take the boat over. Um... I got a bit of news from him. That big boat, the Orancy. The one the colonel bought. Well? Well, it was stolen this afternoon while we were down at the camp. From the harbour? Aye. By a lad who looked like that foreign sailor. And another man helping him. They sailed it north. And there were others aboard as well, they say. Where's the colonel? Well, he was down at the harbour kicking up hair, so Davy said. And the girl was there as well, so that leaves them out. How do you mean? Well, they're marooned here. They can't get anywhere. Well, that's true. Do you want to see her? No, no, not now. We should be at the camp soon. I won't have to pick up Davy. I'll meet you, uh, I'll meet you in front in five minutes. Right. On board, Mr. McLeod. We can get going. All right. Hey, Major, make them keep their heads down. Jim, we better get this 
sorted out between us. Now, when we land there, you'll take in McLeod, a corporal, and ten men and go to the signal post. You better take a good look at the map while it's still light. Oh, yeah, it'll get us there. I'll take the sergeant and the other ten and make a search of the west shore to see that the beaches are empty. When you've dealt with the signal post, we'll meet at the old ruined house, the uh, Morrison Croft, I think you said, Mr. McLeod? Aye, that's right. Now, let's work our route out across the island. Uh, this is as far as we dare go in daylight, Major. Oh. Where is the island? Uh, just behind that headland. It'll take us about half an hour when the light goes. All right. We'll anchor here. We are, Dr. Lawrence. I'm afraid it's rather gloomy inside. But this is where we must wait until they come for you. Mr. Swanson, there are people in here. Don't be alarmed. They'll remain quiet. They won't disturb you. Anyway, there are two rooms. Come into the other one and we can talk. You can be by yourself here. These people do disturb me, Swanson. I had hoped to be going alone. Circumstances have changed, Doctor. I was promised I'd be taken away safely. And so you shall be. But we have to clean up after you. These people were all part of the network, unknown to you, but necessary to you. They have to be saved, too. There are women out there. Seven people in all, three of them women. Would you like to meet them? No. Your instructions to leave London, a phone call, I believe, a woman's voice. Yes, the woman who looked after your safety in London saw that you weren't followed, that you were never in danger. A Miss Thornton. Would you like to meet her? No. Miss Thornton. Yes, Mr. Swanson? When is the call scheduled to the trawler? In two minutes. Uh, thank you. You can go back to the office. <laughs> you never saw her, but she saw you every day. So we must send her away, too. It's the same with the others. We're clearing the ground. What are you doing? Calling the trawlers to tell them everyone is now here, waiting to be taken off. And there's an extra passenger, your friend from London. Is he going? I think it's safest. He'll be company for you. Hmm. And don't worry. You'll be away before anyone can stop us. They'll be here as soon as it's dark. The island is straight ahead. I'm taking you in now. There's a boat there already. I'll put in alongside it. Yes, it's the Orange, all right. Sergeant? Sir. Leave two men to guard the boats, the others come ashore. Sir. Jim? Yes, sir. This is where we split up. Good luck. Thank you, sir. And to you. Lead the way, Ian. I heard it. Corporal. Sure. Get your men together and keep close. There's the old house, Jim. Oh, yes. Let's have the glasses. There's a light on in the house. I can just see a gleam through the thatch. Here, take a look. And I think the door's opening... That. There's a guard in the door. It's that foreign sailor. Keep an eye on him. I can hear something from the sea. It's a trawler coming in. Where? There, north of west. So it is. 
Staff is to aircraft. Aircraft listening. There is a trawler coming in on the west shore. I'm on my way. I'll be there when you need me. Out. Jim, the guard in the door, the sailor, he's armed. And the trawler's signaling. Ian, any minute we'll have them all over the moor. Get the corporal and his men up here. Yeah, I will. Staff is to aircraft. The trawler is signaling. Can you see her? I can see her, John. Would you hold off for a minute? I have something to do. I can wait. I'll take a line on her. Thanks. Jim. Jim, that he. Corporal, there's an armed guard on that door down there. Can you put him out of action silently? Uh, Denin and I can do it, sir. Do it then. Come on, Denin. The troll is still signaling. Yes, I've been trying to translate it. Uh, it'll be in some special code. Keep your eyes skinned for the corporal and Denning. I've lost them. There they are now. Just by the corner of the croft. Ah, oh, yes. Any minute now. They've got him. Staff is to aircraft. Go in now. Look at those flares. It's like daylight. The trawler's turning away. Don't bother about the trawler now. Down to that house, men. Corporal, cover me as I go in. What is it? Look at him, sir. It's like a railway waiting room. Just waiting to go. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Then get your hands up. All of you. Leave your bags where they are. Get back against the wall. Two, four, six, seven. Corporal. Yeah? Take the four men over there. The three women... Stop her. Stay against the wall. Search them. Sir. Denning, you take the... Ah, oh, the Major's here, sir. Well, how are things going, Jim? Well, we've caught seven of them. Oh, well, Major Williams, there are two men in a small room over here, sir. Oh, two more, eh? Uh, bring them out here, Corporal. Sir? Yeah. Good evening, Major Williams. Mr. Hammond. I'm glad you got here in time, Major. I was beginning to be worried. Oh, I didn't expect you, sir. Uh, the Brigadier was taking no chances. If you didn't get here in time, I was to go on with this lot uh, to the trawler and behind the curtain. I didn't fancy it. I should think not. Is this Dr. Lawrence with you? Uh, no, this is Mr. Eric Swanson, the organiser. Sorry, Swanson, when you get into this game, you meet some strange companions... You never know who to trust. Oh, this is uh, Captain Nicholson, uh, Mr. Hammond from the department in London. Oh, I'm delighted to see you, Captain. Mr. Hammond, you uh, have a radio here. Swanson was talking to the trawler when your aircraft rudely interrupted him. I see. Uh, Major Williams, everything's under control here. I think one of us should contact the brigadier. he want to see these people. Right, I'll go. I'll take the sergeant and two men. Sergeant! Sir! Captain, we should get these people away from here as quickly as possible. These trawlers won't give up so easily. We are staying here until the brigadier arrives, sir. I'm advising you, Captain. Ordering you. The brigadier's orders are different, sir. What are you doing here anyway? The brigadier didn't say anything about it. Well, he wouldn't, would he? I was here in case you failed. Captain, it is dangerous to stay here. Believe me, get going. Everyone found in this house stays here. Brigadier's orders. And I am going to search you, sir. If you hadn't arrived, Captain, I, I volunteered to go down the escape line for, for the department. So what do you expect to find? Money? False passport? A revolver? I'll take the revolver. I'm going to find the brigadier. You are staying here. What's the matter, Captain? Are you after Grant's job? No, sir. I'm just trying to finish it for him. Only a friend could have got so close to Grant. You're being insolent. No, sir. Obedient. Everyone stays till the brigadier arrives. I am the brigadier's aide. I'm going to warn him. Mr. Hammond. It's dark out there. And it's a big island. Sentries have been posted with orders to challenge anyone who tries to leave this building. If any such person does not return to it immediately, they are to shoot. Withdraw the order. No, sir. Captain, I have been longer in this business than you. I know when a man is bluffing. 
You must have a very good reason for leaving, sir. I've warned you. I'm going down to the bay. Shot him, sir. And uh, Brigadier is here. Captain Nicholson. Sir. Why did you let Hammond leave? I didn't, sir. I ordered him to stay until you came. Did you know he was here, sir? No. No, I didn't. Who are these people? Uh, one of them is Dr. Lawrence. And uh, that's Swanson. He's the organizer, sir. Uh, seven, eight people. About Hammond. I think he was the man Grant saw. I'm sure of it. It's a pity you let him make a run for it. But it may have saved us a great deal of trouble. We can get what we want from Swanson and Lawrence. I'm having them all searched. It's been a very successful operation, Nicholson. And a very necessary success. Well done. Thank you, sir. I think the trawler's calling. Leave that to the Navy. Get all these people in the boats, will you? Right, sir. by Robert Barr. Jim Nicholson was played by Edward D'Souza, Ian McLeod by Bryden Murdoch, Major Williams, Peter Hawkins, the Brigadier, Michael Kilgariff, George Hammond, Kim Grant, and Dr. Lawrence by Roy Spencer. The Dark Island was produced for the BBC by Peter Titheridge.